Here in blue, we can see some killer T cells through the microscope. Killer T cells actively patrol the body, searching for anything foreign that shouldn't be there, such as infection and other diseases. We are now looking at the magnified surface of a killer T cell. These cells have special receptors on their cell surface that can recognise and latch onto foreign particles on the surface of abnormal or infected cells. Here, a molecule called MHC1 on the surface of an abnormal cell presents foreign particles that can be detected by the killer T cell receptor. The T cell receptor then binds to these foreign particles, with a second receptor binding event stabilising the connection. The process is occurring again on the left. After initial detection of the foreign signal, the T-cell receptor assemblies then cluster together. We will now move below the cell surface inside the killer T-cell. These long glowing chains form the internal part of the T-cell receptor. These chains begin the complex signalling process that activates the killer T-cell after receptor binding and clustering. The killer T-cell is then ready to attack. Now we can see some cancer cells through a microscope. Cancer cells have changes in their DNA which make them multiply out of control. These changes make cancer cells different than normal cells. So why doesn't our immune system recognise and kill them? Cancer cells can develop many clever ways of hiding from our immune system. One way they do this is to avoid recognition by killer T cells through MHC1 and the T cell receptor. On the left, we see the surface of a cancer cell. Cancer cells can avoid recognition by reducing the number of MHC1 molecules on their surface that would normally alert killer T cells to them. This means that detection and killing of cancer cells by killer T cells is impaired. So, is there a way that we can re-educate a patient's own T cells to make them better at recognising and attacking cancer cells? One approach is called chimeric antigen receptor T cell, or CAR T cell therapy. The process begins with filtering the patient's blood through a machine that collects T cells and other white blood cells. Here, we are looking at the patient T cells through a microscope. In the laboratory, the T cells are instructed to produce special receptors called chimeric antigen receptors, or CARs, on their surface, making them into CAR T cells. The CARs consist of different components that occur naturally in cells, but which are never found together. The CARs sit on the surface of the cell and are engineered to recognise and attach to a patient's cancer cells via the binding domain. We will now move below the cell surface. The signalling domain inside the cell is similar to that in the naturally occurring killer T cell receptor. Once the CAR T cell is bound, CAR signalling domains begin a chain of events which activates its killer function to destroy cancer cells. A CAR is therefore a modular combination of cell recognition components and signalling components all in one. We are now looking at the magnified surface of a CAR T cell in contact with a cancer cell. Once they are in the body, the CARs can directly bind to specific markers on the patient's cancer cells, shown in yellow, overcoming the need for MHC1 to be present. The bound cars then cluster together. We will now move below the cell membrane. Here, we are looking inside the CAR T cell at the CAR signalling domains. The binding interaction has activated the signalling domains 
beginning a chain of events which activates the CAR T-cell. Once activated, the green CAR T-cells release toxic chemicals into the cancer cells, which kills them, indicated in red. CAR T-cells are known as serial killers because they can kill, release and move on to kill other cancer cells in a cycle that can occur multiple times. This makes them very effective in the fight against cancer. <laughs>